when Jesus Christ began to teach and preach about the kingdom of God, one of the concepts that he brought into the Jewish world was that God is our father. The Jews did not think of God as their father. They were thinking Abraham is their father. So when they talked about God, he was the creator, the Lord, the master, the sovereign who controls everything. But they did not have this concept of God as a father. But starting in the uh, Mount, Sermon on the Mount, many, many times Jesus introduces Father and God as our Father. He said, as your Father in heaven, your Father, your Father. He didn't only say, my Father. Jesus began to introduce God as your Father. That means the disciples' Father. So today is a Father's Day celebrated around the world. And uh, majority of them may have a wonderful Father. They may have a good feeling when they think about Father, but there are many people who did not have good relationship with their earthly Father. And because of the relationship with the earthly Father, their relationship with God is also absolutely affected. Because I can tell you from my own experience, when I first came to know Jesus Christ, He was a wonderful friend, He was a great Savior, He was a loving Shepherd, and you can go on and on. But every time when I come across the idea of God as my Father, I had a hard time to relate with God because I did not have that loving relationship with my earthly Father. So because of that, many of us find it very difficult to relate to God as a loving, kind, compassionate a father who is there to protect us, a father who is there to provide for us, a father who is there for us no matter what we do in life. That kind of an unwavering trust in God is affected in many of our lives because we have had a very bitter, bad or unpleasant relationship with our earthly father. So in that line, I want you to go into the Sermon on the Mount from chapter 5, 6, and 7 of Matthews, you will see many, many times Jesus introduces God as our Father. And particularly, let us look at the heart of the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. The center is in this Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 9 onward, where Jesus began to teach his disciples how to pray. There he captures the Heart of God as our Father. So let me read uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. This then is how you should pray, the disciples were asking Jesus, teach us how to pray. And he said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. First of all, Jesus is introducing the will of the Father. What kind of will? Just like it is in heaven. The perfect, good and pleasant will of God, Jesus is saying, pray to your Father that His perfect will will come into your life on earth as it is in heaven. That means in our everyday life, we have a Father in heaven who has a perfect will for us, the pleasant will, the good and the perfect will of God. In Romans chapter 12 verse 2, Paul says, when we have renewed our mind by transforming it by the power of God's word, by the power of the Holy Spirit, then we will know what is good and pleasing will for us. And here Jesus is telling, we have a Father in heaven whose will for us is as though we are living in heaven. Many of us, we talk about, oh, this is heavenly, this is like heaven, this is wonderful, this is amazing. So whenever we talk about perfection, wonderful, amazing, we say heaven or heavenly. In our earthly life, in our miserable life, in our hopeless life, Jesus is introducing the will of the Father that is so beautiful, that is so heavenly. Let your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. Then second thing he says in verse 11, Give us today 
our daily bread. Here we have a father who is so interested in our material and physical well-being. Of course, the Bible uh, says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 also, and Jesus himself said in Matthew's Gospel 4 and, and Mark, Luke, all they repeat that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That is the spiritual side of our existence. But our God knows that we are also in our bodies, in our physical existence. He cares for our material existence. Give us this day our daily bread. Whatever we need to live in this world, our Father is interested in taking care of it. And then you will continue if you read in chapter 6, verse 24 to 25 to 34, you will see how Jesus very beautifully describes this will of our Father who is willing to take care of our needs, then he will say, don't worry about what you will eat, what you will wear, and what you will drink. Look at the birds in the sky. Your heavenly Father feeds them. How much more he will feed you? Look at the lilies of the valley. Your heavenly Father beautifies them. How much more he will give you clothes to wear? So in other words, we have our heavenly Father who is so much interested in our physical well-being. He is willing to give us all that we ask or imagine. And in Matthew chapter 7, again the same uh, Sermon on the Mount. In chapter 7, verse 7 onward, you read, He says, Ask and it shall be given, seek and you will find, knock and the door shall be opened. And then he goes and says, You as an earthly father, though you are evil, but when your children ask you something, you give them the best in your ability. So how much more your heavenly father will give you good things, he said. Our Heavenly Father cares for our physical well-being. If you are going through financial difficulties, our Heavenly Father cares for that. If your body is sick and you are going through sicknesses, your Heavenly Father is mindful of your condition. You have some physical problems or any other things that are bothering you in this world. We have a Father to whom we can go and continue to ask continue to seek and continue to knock in his door and he will always answer us. Our Heavenly Father is interested in taking care of our material <coughs> life, physical life, financial life, social existence is within his goodwill for us, within his heavenly will for us. And then verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. There again we see our Heavenly Father interested in our emotional and mental well-being. You know, you may have a wonderful body, you may have plenty of money, but if your emotions are damaged and your mind is destroyed, life becomes miserable. So here is in one example of how our emotions and our minds can be destroyed. That is when we have a broken relationship with fellow human beings. He said, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Now many times when we read this passage, we think about our sinfulness, our debts and our unrighteousness. But the point here Jesus is pointing is, we have forgiven those who have sinned against us, who have hurt us, who has destroyed our emotions and our mind, our peace is gone, particularly in relation to your father. And many times we cannot forgive our earthly father because they have done serious damage to us. Jesus is talking about a father who is interested in our emotional well-being. You know, if you have no grudge against anyone, if you are not a person driven by hate, if you are not a person who is so uh, keen on taking revenge, or you are not wishing evil to anyone, you are a good person, you, your heart is healed, your mind is healed, you wish well to everyone, you are a healthy person. You have joy, you have peace, you can sleep well at night, you get up in the morning with the joy in your heart, there is a spring under your feet and you move about as though life is wonderful because you have healthy emotions, your mind is right. Forgiveness 
to those who have hurt you is so essential for our emotional health and well-being. Our Father in Heaven is interested to have that kind of an emotional health. Healthy person, when someone attacks you, when someone hurts you, you are not offended because you're a whole person. Because you have a Heavenly Father whose Heavenly will you have accepted in your life. You can forgive your enemy, you can love your enemy, you can do good to those who are doing evil to you because you have a Father whose will for you is a heavenly will. His will is in your life is done as it is in heaven. Then thirdly, he said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one. This is our spiritual well-being. Physical well-being, give us our daily bread. Emotional and mental well-being, Lord, forgive us that as we have forgiven those who have hurt us. And now spiritual well-being, protect us from the evil one, from satanic attacks, demonic attacks, any kind of spiritual bondage, Lord, forgive, uh, Lord, protect us and lead us not into temptation. Let me not swell my spirit with my sinful habits and behaviors. Let me not fall in temptation, Lord, protect me, deliver me. That is our spiritual well-being. In other words, we have a Heavenly Father who is interested in your physical well-being, your emotional well-being and your spiritual well-being. You cannot live successful and a joyful life even in a material world without the help of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, Moses says to Israel, when you go into the promised land and when you have houses and land and when you have filled and you have everything gold and silver, don't forget that it is God who gives you the ability to make wealth. If you are a rich, rich person, you have everything materially, don't forget it is God who has granted you that grace. And then if you are a healthy person, you, you are a happy person, your emotions are right, you have no grudge against, you don't hate anyone, you love everyone, you are a merry-go-round person, don't forget it is because of the Heavenly Father's grace to you. And then you are spiritually very well, you are not afraid of the devil, you are not afraid of the demonic spirit, you never fall in temptations, you are a very righteous person, your conscience is clear, your heart is pure, your mind never condemns you. Don't forget that is also because of the grace of Heavenly Father. Without His help, we cannot live spiritually healthy life. Without His help, we cannot live emotionally healthy life. Without His help, we cannot live physically healthy life. So today on our Father's Day, let us focus on this amazing Father whom Jesus introduces us in the Sermon of the Mount, saying that there is a Heavenly Father who has a Heavenly will for us. And in that will, our physical existence is included, our emotional, mental existence is included, and our spiritual state is also included. And you know, James would say, submit yourself to the Father, submit yourself to God, and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Satan has no power over us. Jesus in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, I have given power over all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means will hurt you because Heavenly Father protects us from the evil one and he helps us not to fall in temptation. How? He has sent us his Holy Spirit to guide us and whenever we are led by the Holy Spirit, when our mind is set on the things of the Spirit, when our mind is set on the things of heaven, we can easily say no to temptations. The Holy Spirit is there to prompt us, to give us the strength to say no to the temptations. So that is our Heavenly Father who is willing to give us this amazing uh, heavenly help to live on this world. And interestingly, if you go down in verse 16, this Heavenly Father is so much interested in your personal well-being. And Jesus, when he said, when you pray, when you fast, when you seek this Heavenly Father, go inside your room, lock yourself. How? Yeah. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do in verse 16, but they disfigure their faces to show 
others they are fasting you know this heavenly father you cannot manipulate like the hypocrites do truly i tell you they have received their reward but when you fast put on put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret and will reward you now father is unseen but he sees what we do in our secret life this is the beautiful thing about our heavenly father is that you don't have to man manufacture your relationship with him he knows what is going on in your life if you are a praying person he knows if you are not praying person he knows so there are times we we fall into the temptation of religion that we come to church and we lift our hands and we want to say hallelujah praise the lord if you have the gift of speaking in tongue we want to speak in tongue and we want to impress the leaders or pastors or believers or friends that's hypocrisy that kind of relationship with heavenly father is meaningless you need to have relationship with this heavenly father one on one in a secret place where no one sees you praying also say when you want to pray don't be like the hypocrites who want to go into the street corners and go into your secret room lock the door behind you and your father who sees in secret will do all you uh, many a christians cannot enjoy this intimate relationship with the father because they have fallen into the danger of hypocrisy by falling in religious lifestyle do you know your heavenly father in that way can you go to your heavenly father with confidence in terms of your physical existence your material need often time when we face material need we go to people asking loan from people we borrow we ask help we say can you help me can you do this for me i am in trouble but the first place to go when you have material need is to your heavenly father any christian who knows how to go to the heavenly father in secret for their physical need they will come out and they will testify how god has miraculously met their need for example if i need something i go to my father in secret when i pray and when i come out of my prayer or we trust in the father god will speak to someone somewhere someone will come along and say what can i do for you he will send agents of his grace to meet my need in the same way emotionally also maybe someone has really hurt me so bad for example i could not forgive my father for many years until i came to christ but when we come to christ and go to heavenly father say lord father i cannot forgive this person help me to forgive help me to heal my inner being you know as you continue to seek him there will come a time when your heart will begin to heal itself in such a way the hatred will get out of will go out of your heart and without realizing you will begin to feel sorry for the person whom you were hating before you go to your heavenly father in secret but in these days mostly in the western christianity when i have emotional problem the first person we go to a counselor or a psychologist or a psychiatrist we go to a human being and we tell all the bad things that person had done to us and we feel a little lighter we come home for, for, for a few days or a few weeks we feel better and again we forget and we fall into the same trap again and again so many people are spending so much money going to the counselor or going to the psychiatrist and they can never be totally healed but when you go to your heavenly father he is the one who mends the broken hearted there is an ointment of healing in his hand he heals our brokenness within our inner life so any christian who is free from hypocrisy who is free from religious garbage can go to the father and he receives this inner healing and he becomes a happy and joyful person he can forgive anyone he can be 
peacefully existing with any other human being. And spiritually also, when you don't uh, try to follow a religious system of your spirituality, you will be in love with your Heavenly Father. And even when you fall in temptation, when you make mistakes, you will not live in that fallen state. You will rise up, you will get up and will go to the Father. And the Father will say, my son, my daughter, don't worry. I have paid for your sin once and for all. And I love you. I don't want you to fall in that sin anymore. I'm here to take care of you. I'm here to help you. Yes, you have fallen in sin now, but I want you to overcome that and I'll help you to overcome that. That will come when you know this Heavenly Father in, a, in that secret place, 101, without religious garbage. That's an amazing Father. Any person who has this habit of spending time with the Father in secret will not fall in the same temptation twice or three times. He or she will overcome and begin to glorify the Heavenly Father. And then down through he will say, let your light shine before the people. Let your good works be visible before people so that they will give you give glory to your Father who is in heaven again. What we ought to show is the lifestyle that we have now developed out of the relationship with this Heavenly Father who takes care of our physical need, who takes care of our emotional need, who takes care of our spiritual need. If we can rest in the goodness of God in these areas, we will begin to manifest goodness. We will be a good person. We don't have to say, I'm a good person people will begin to realize that there is something good in this person. You will be a channel of God's blessing to many people. And when they see the goodness in your life, they will glorify our Father in heaven. So today in Father's Day, may you and I know this Father in a personal way, in an intimate way, so that we begin to develop the nature of God. In, in Philippians chapter 4, Paul says, we are to become like God in our inner being. You know, by renewing our mind, by renewing the inner man, we become like God in righteousness. Then the goodness begins to manifest from us. And when that happens, we bring glory to our Father who is in heaven. God bless you. And let me finally close in prayer.